welcome back to the Chosen Life Podcast Wrestling Edition with the wrestler, our favorite, the one and only, Mason Rush. Mason, welcome back for yet another week of Wrestling Talk. Yet again, it's great to be here. Wouldn't want to be anywhere else in the world right now. Me neither, man. And we're going to talk about one of my favorite topics. Uh, our producer is going to be cringing when I say these three letters, but AEW, All Elite Wrestling. Our producer, as far as I used to know, was the biggest AEW fan back in the day. I don't know what happened. Maybe since Orange Cassidy changed his gimmick a little, he got sour. I don't know. But our producer used to love AEW. I've been to events with our producer. You bring up a good point. You know what I think it was? I think when Chris Jericho went to the learning tree and stopped using Judas. Might be. I think AW was dead to him. That must Actually, be it. Or, well, if you recall, we went to AW when it was live in Toronto. And I'm pretty sure that was the only time the whole year he didn't use the Judas theme song. And that was horrible. Because that was really, if you're going to an AW show, there's maybe a couple things you look forward to. That's one of them. And then the other one is John Moxley bleeding. Uh, no, but uh, Darby Allen made uh, Brody King bleed, and uh, he, he used a uh, stone or rock on him. Like, I, I'm not getting the whole bleeding thing, but that's another topic for another day. But I gotta say, man, I started watching Rampage and Collision, and you know we're talking about. You call me up on a Wednesday, and you're telling me, "Hey, how come there's no dynamite?" I'm <laughs> like, "Because it's Title Tuesday." <laughs> So Dynamite uh, is on Wednesdays unless it's not. It's on Rampage is on Fridays unless it's not. And Collision is on Saturdays unless it's not. And I don't know if it's TV scheduling or what it is, but it's kind of hard to build a fan base when week to week you don't know what day, what time, if it's going to be on. Just saying. Yeah. You know what else is on Tuesday? NXT, which had Randy Orton on it. So... There's no chance of me watching whatever else is on. If Randy Orton is wrestling that night in his hometown. So, again, cool. Put it on a Tuesday. But you're, one of your 18 fans is going to go on Wednesday and try and watch it and call you and say, where the hell is it? Oh, it was on Tuesday. How? Excalibur didn't call me to tell me it was on Tuesday. How am I supposed to know? Because I don't watch Dinah Page and Collision and whatever else they put on TV with Hook. I don't watch that. See, we need wrestling pretty much every day. So we got Raw on Monday, yep. NXT Tuesday, yep. Dynamite on Wednesday. Oh, unless it's not. Usually it is. Yep. I think people watch TNA on Thursday. I know Thursday now we got football. Football? Thursday night now we got TNF. Thursday night football. So That's not wrestling, bro. No, but it's... But it's a, wrestling- a good break yes. from wrestling because Friday is Smackdown. Smackdown. Right. And Saturday... And you don't miss Smackdown. No, you cannot. And and the thing is, Rampage comes on after Smackdown, which makes sense. You may actually get some of the Smackdown crowd over. When you have a WWE PLE on a Saturday, and let's say Collision is on right after the PLE finishes, I think the issue is more people are watching the WWE press conference after the PLE than probably watching Collision. Yeah, you mean the show that was made for CM Punk way back when? That's another thing. You bring up a good point. Cody's gone. CM Punk is gone. This ain't helping matters, is it? No. I mean, not only are they gone, but they're thriving in the competition, right? Like, it's almost like Triple H, it was an extra added jab to to give Cody a belt after coming from AW, right? Like... It's it seems like they get a kick out of out of taking the guys who are sour in AEW and and make making them something in in WWE. If you're AEW, which one hurts more, Cody Rhodes or CM Punk? Cody Rhodes, because I think he helped create that. He yeah, helped he was build it, he was right? So yeah. he, you build your baby, you watch it grow, and then you say. Yeah, I don't like you anymore, right? Like that hurts more than we're bringing in this big time name. We'll see how it goes. We'll throw it at the wall, see if it sticks. We'll make him his own show. We'll call it Collision. He'll do one of them and then leave. 
and we'll still run it called the Claudio Castagnoli Saturday Night Event Show. Tell me, do you recall what Cody Rhodes was doing in AW right before he left? Cody Rhodes was reduced to pretty much a mid Carter at that point. Yeah, I he don't... said he wasn't going to go for the belt anymore. He wasn't going to be the heavyweight champion anymore. And he was getting booed by the fans. And he was getting pretty stale yeah. pretty quick. Kind of reminded him probably of what happened to him in WWE. And lo and behold, I don't know how he worked out magic the way he did. But to go from an AW afterthought to the champ, think about Ethan Page. When Ethan Page was almost done in AW, yeah. Ethan Page was an afterthought Rampage reject. Yep. He was basically a comedy wrestler at this point yep. and basically job in it for AEW. Think about yep. that for a second. And then a second later, you're the NXT champ. Uh, Ethan Page, Cody Rhodes, loving their life, really happy with their decisions. And part of it comes back to it. You know, we watch what we watch in AW. Okay. We watch as fans. We think we understand everything. When you start to hear the interviews and you start to understand the dynamics, and when you hear a professional wrestler saying, I came and I came to the woman's locker room and I said, Hey, I'm here. I'm willing to train any of you. And one person stood up and said, Yeah, I'll come and train. And the rest of them say, Oh, I'm injured. I can't train. Or, you know what? I don't need to train. I'm wrestling tomorrow. I'm good. When there's no practice schedule, there's no routine, I think this is part of the issue with AW as far as consistency goes. People not putting their time into the locker room, not caring, sitting at home collecting their paychecks. And it comes, you know, the guy I'm going to blame is Tony Khan. It comes down to Tony Khan. Tony Khan not having any semblance of reasonableness as far as an order goes. And when no, there is no rules, you got chaos. Yeah, you let the inmates run the prison. So we got a solution for that. You know who's coming, right? It's very obvious. They've been hinting at it, hitting at it. You know, John Moxley's gone off. He's going to form mm. his own faction. Who's going to be heading up the secret guy, the leader for the John Mo Moxley faction? It's going to be Shane O'Mac. Here yeah. comes the money. Oh, I don't think so. Oh, it I, is. It, it so is. It, first of all, there's a picture. Maybe. There's a picture of Tony Khan with a secret meeting with Shane McMahon at the airport. There's a young Bucks shaking hands with Shane McMahon at the airport. Obviously, all AW meetings happen at the airport. Shane McMahon, that last name, AW, this has to happen, Mason. It has to happen. Yeah, I mean, it could happen. But I don't think so. And even if it did, it's going to be like Sasha Banks going to AEW. It's going to be like Ricochet going to. You're going to have all sizzle and no steak. And it's going to die out. And good luck. I'm going to beg to differ on this one. It's all like right. One time I'm going to How many times can Shane McMahon jump off a cage? No. What I'm saying is this much. He cannot be just a face fake leader Tony Khan actually has to listen to Shane McMahon and Shane McMahon's ideas because whatever Shane McMahon can come up with at this point, Tony Khan, you're well advised. Shane knows what he's doing. He has the bloodline. Yeah, he he does. I I listen. I don't. I think I'm indifferent when it comes to that. Um, I think at the end of the day, you can sum it up by saying that no matter what they do, they're just trying to sniff WWE's status, right? Like. So they could try whatever they want. They can bring in Vince McMahon. They can bring in the president. They can, right? they can bring whatever gimmicks they want to do. But it's all just to try and steal eyeballs from the big show. And I'm not talking about Paul White. I hear... I like that one. I hear often on the chat rooms, and what they're saying is Tony Khan listens to all the podcasts, listens to what the fans want, and he's running his wrestling federation like a fantasy wrestling league, basically. He's putting his own dream matchups. He's basically a fanboy, creating on his own. If there were some experienced bookers in there, people would actually had the experience in there to know what's going to work, not work, create storylines for him. Like WWE, they started hiring writers, real professional yeah. writers that write for sitcoms, movies, etc. Versus the fanboy doing it. And I love Tony Khan to pieces. That heart's in the right place. But at some point when I'm watching Rampage, I'm like, okay, so Butcher and Blade, Commander. Uh, I can kind of start to understand why maybe... Yeah. Not more than 300,000 people want to turn in on that. It's also, too, right? Like, again, as an indie wrestler, um, I've wrestled for small promotions in front of 15 people and behind a school in Oshawa. 
and I've wrestled for 500 people screaming amazing Hamilton fans who know everything about wrestling in Hamilton. And if you paid me more money to go do those 15 person kind of makeshifty shows, I would do the other ones for free. Right? So as a wrestler, you work off the crowd, you work off the, the, the energy, right? When you're walking out and you can hear each individual person clapping, it's, it, it almost ruins the moment. It ruins, how are you going to do a big pose? How are you going to, you know, talk to the crowd when there is no crowd versus a packed house of people just waiting for you to come out there and compete and, and do great things, right? So a w w w e right it doesn't matter how much money you're made how great you are when you walk out and half the stadium is empty and they're barely selling the floor seats it, a guy like edge a guy, right it's it's hard to go from a packed arena ev- sold out every single night where you can't even hear your own thoughts to walking out to you know your friends your parents couple other wrestlers friends and parents right totally different experience so again money whatever people will never be able to compete with that feeling of walking out as a wrestler in a wwe event versus an empty stadium for AEW. so if i can give you two names now as we sum up today's episode they're sticking in my mind one is the future star of happy gilmore 2 and that's gonna be mjf maxwell jacob friedman and MJF, you know, being the face, the star of AW, and then he's the champ, and then he disappears, then he wins another belt, then he disappears. I know he's out filming Happy Gilmore 2, which is awesome. If you're M- MJF, why are you not in WWE right now? Why are you still in AW in your estimation? Because they don't want me. He's not the, he wasn't the hottest free agent. Both federations are bending over backwards to bid for him. You don't see that? No, I think I think he had a flash in the pan a couple of years ago when he had like those diabolical promos. He was really like killing it. And then I think he just kind of fizzled out like everybody else. And he's still great. He's still their best promo, their best rest, their best superstar, 100 mm-hmm. percent. But he would not have that same status in the WWE. He'd be sunk right to the bottom. He'd be a mid Carter fight, losing to L.A. Knight every week losing to Austin Theory, right? And he would not like that. Not like that, right? There's a lot of great talkers in WWE. AW is few and far between. So he can get away with a lot there, right? When CM Punk used to come out and challenge him, he didn't look so great, right? When he's ripping Roosh, it's a different story. Who's the bigger star, MJF or Austin Theory? Austin Theory is a bigger star. In wrestling right he doesn't do the movies he doesn't do the right iron claw whatever movies mjf did but i would say your mid carter in wwe is more famous and popular than your top guys in AEW. and i it could be a hot take but that's true so i want to rewind it to another guy one of my favorite wrestlers great theme song he sings it himself too former leader of hit row Okay. The man they call Swerve. Okay. okay. Swerve, you know, I'm perturbed about Swerve because here you are. You're the face of AW now. You're the champ. Everything's going great. Drops the belt to Danielson. Doesn't get a sniff at a rematch. Now is dropped to a mid-carder yet again. Now facing Hangman Adam Page. Apparently, Triple H is sniffing around him. Swerve, loyal to AW. They gave, they gave him the chance when WWE didn't. What do you think it's going to take for Swerve to want to head over to WWE. What's, what's not much, right? He's the only thing that would hold him back would be his ego. That would be the only thing because I don't think WWE would want necessarily an MJF right now. Mm-hmm. I think they need a swerve, especially with the comments they've been getting about their choice of people they choose to put on TV. Yes. I think PLEs and PLEs. I, right. I yeah, think absolutely. swerve would. Obviously help that, but in a great way because he's he's a great wrestler. Swerve is Swerve is good. Great wrestler, great on the mic, sings. The man is talented. However, yes, his theme song does promote drunk driving. That's and true. I and I 
don't necessarily agree with swerving when I drive because it's dangerous. I feel like that's a metaphor for something. I hope so. When we because have swerve if, on because sometime, we should insurance premiums would be pretty high, especially here in Canada. Yeah. So swerve, I imagine having the conversation with Triple H, he must want assurances that he's going to be given the push and have the opportunity to fight at a top level versus coming back as a mid carder at this point. Because if Swerve is going to be anything but a champ or fighting for a championship, if I'm him and I'm going to go back to hit row life, I'm staying in AW. No, I, I think I think Swerve's trajectory back would be similar, not necessarily champion, but to Cody's trajectory back. So yes. Cody didn't come back as Stardust. He came back as Cody Rhodes, prime entrance through a rising podium to the whole crowd. Remember that? Like his his Absolutely. it was WrestleMania was it WrestleMania or summer? It was a big event. He I came tried to block through it out of my mind. And he was honest. and it was like that was the only time I've ever been like, this Cody Rhodes guy is pretty cool because they made the whole show about him that night, right? So I I don't yeah, I think Swerve comes back as a a upper mid carter, not not a beginning lower level guy we're watching a ple cody wins a match and as the credits start to roll all of a sudden swerves theme song starts to blast and swerves comes out with prince nana and stares at cody i think wwe fans are loving that would you like this hot take that if they bring swerve back they don't bring nana with him because nana is very AEW, and he's not very wwe I know you hate that, but what do you think? Well, we already got... MVP. Or they tell him to tone it down, right? Because that whole, right? that That's not flying with your WWE crowd. It's the, not. The dance will work. The dance will work. The Nana dance, you have I to. don't. I, I yeah. Listen, it might. It might. And, but, you already but, have, and you already have MVP sniffing around Swerve trying to do some business yeah. with him. Well, that's another thing. They're, they're bringing it the other way. They're bringing all of the WWE guys hurt business to... AW, which could then have Swerve join, right? Like, we'll see. We'll see what happens. I gotta say, man, if MVP takes over Swerve and Swerve and Lashley are in the hurt business, I feel like Swerve is at the point in his life he doesn't need the hurt business. He is the business. That's what I'm saying, right? And, 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 yeah, yeah. No, it, it, you you go from WWE to AW when your career is on the decline. You go from AW to WWE, and your career usually takes off. A world with Swerve Strickland and no Prince Nana dance is a world I don't want to live in. And uh, that's listen, my I just, take on I, that. I, listen, all right. I was just wondering because I, I do see Swerve doing his thing. I don't see Nana making that same same jump. So you never know. But that's my hot take. As I try to control myself. Yeah, I know. I know. Please, as, the folks, world, as Prince Nana's only fan. I, I bought the shirt the second <laughs> it came out. They said it was limited edition. I still got it. I'll wear it on a future episode. Do it. Every pose yeah, of the dance. Yeah, you I love the it. Prince Nana dance. I know and you do. Prince Nana for life. Please send in your takes. What do you think of AW? Where's MJF going? Where's Swerve? Is he headed to WWE to face Cody? There's so much life still in wrestling to go. We'll be back next week. He might be back in the future. Oh, I'll be back. Be back soon. He's Mason Rush. And you are, are welcome. welcome.